You're in town to uh, deliver the, the President's Award, to present that to our Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women project. Why was that project chosen for a President's Award? It's uh, under the caption of the Innovation Award, Janet, and it was a combination, a great combination of investigative journalism, our, our desire to become more and more uh, digital focused, and this ability to go back com combining our resources in Toronto, in Winnipeg, uh, we got some people in Thunder Bay that contributed some Vancouver. So when you put all of the strength of the, journaliz of the journalism that we do uh, and on a subject matter as important as this and the 230 women that we looked at going back as far as six, I mean six years worth of work, it was by far um, a very easy choice for a President's Award. What sort of difference have you seen that database make? What sort of reaction are you getting from the community? The conversation has been around issues uh, on this highway of tears. I saw um, Ana Maria do um, um, road shows, literally taking now a, um, a particular uh, virtual rea reality four minute segment, which I showed to the parliamentarians in, uh, in Ottawa, uh, in front of the Heritage Committee when we were there two weeks, three weeks ago. It's, it's a conversation that we've started. It's reopened some cases, as you know. It's been spectacularly impactful and important. And of course, Anna Maria and uh, The Current were just in Winnipeg last week. That show will be on The Current this Wednesday, so you can listen to that town hall they held. Now, last week, you go to the government and you say, we'd like $400 million more a year, please. How can you justify that money? It's about what we want to be. The dollars are the consequence of the ambition and the vision. The vision is, let's invest in culture, because culture is a good thing. And let's put around this hub that we would like to see happen, all the creative industries, whether it's us, media, uh, not only CBC Radio Canada, but the other media uh, companies also. It's about anybody who creates content, authors, architects, engineers, and let's, let's invest in culture, Let's change the storytelling that we do. And to do that, there's some economic benefits because when you, do, when you make this investment in culture, there's an immediate impact on GDP, on jobs being created, uh, on uh, wages and, and employment income being generated by this additional investment. So Janet, yes, there's a cost to it. The cost is going ad-free for the public broadcaster, allows us to focus on the things we do well, which is public service mandate, making a very big dis distinction between the privates and us even more, and the total cost of this for this ad-free broadcaster plus our reinvestment to finish the shift in which we are is $1 per Canadian per year. That's the total of 418 million bucks. So it would go from 34 to, to 46, to 46 dollars dollars. per Canadian, per man, woman, and child yes. in this country. It, and you know what? you got to put this in perspective. Because what is the average of the 18 most important public broadcasters in the world? The investment per capita is 87 bucks. It's actually 86 bucks. When you compare where we would be, 46, we would be number 15 on that list of 18 most important, up from number 60. But it still sounds like a, a huge chunk of money when you when you spit out that number. Yes, it is. is. Going ad free, I mean, besides the obvious, there's no ads. What would Canadians get out of that? What they will get is a completely different broadcaster because whether we like it or not, even though it's not the only driving force between the choices that we make on our programming schedules or the initiatives that we carry, there is a commercial lens through which we look at everything we do because we've got to balance our budgets. So, what we're saying to Canadians is. Yes, there is a cost to it, but let's look at how different the broadcaster would be. If you're into uh, the, the BBC or the ABC in Australia and you hear the sound of the broadcasters, if you hear our radio sound right now, when you turn the dial or where you hit a CBC station, you know exactly from the sound of it that you're actually listening to CBC radio, whether it's Radio 2 or the First Network. The same thing, we would like to become that for uh, the television environment. You say getting rid of that commercial lens that we have to make programming decisions with that lens on. Getting rid of that takes the shackles off, it allows us to take more risks. Give me an example of a decision we couldn't make now because of that commercial lens. Well, let me, let me turn this around into the no, storytelling piece. Question, yes, I will. Please. But, and, but I'm, I gotta go through, for example, um, what it is we're saying right now. In prime time, I'll give you an example of something we've done. Uh, we've, we're into Canadian films right now. There's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a, an ambition for it, there's an appetite for it. We've got good, great uh, film uh, producers. 
instead of doing what we've done on, Radio on Radio-Canada, which is to open an ad-free position at or, or, or slot at 10.45 on a, on a Saturday evening, it's great, but it's 10.45 on a Saturday evening. Imagine if we could do this in prime time, no ads at 6 o'clock or at 8 o'clock in, in the middle of the week or on a Friday evening. Bringing Canadians together, bring families together to actually watch Canadian films in prime time. Prime time when ads are the most expensive. Absolutely. So therefore, we would be tempted to run a, a absolutely that because be less those risky. those programs in prime time. And that's the the answer to your question. Yes, it's not the only thing to drive us because we have public affairs uh, programs in prime time. We do things, um, uh, a lot of international coverage. Uh, we do news in prime time. We do special editions, we have marketplace. I mean, we have all sorts of CBC mandate important programming in prime time that we all not always look at through the lens of a commercial broadcaster. But we don't have maybe as many of those programs as we could. We have many newspapers in the country who lately have been very loud about CBC in the digital space. They don't like it. They believe that we're competing with them and therefore contributing to the demise of newspapers in Canada. What do you say to them? I wrote a letter because I kept hearing these comments as these newspaper companies were parodying, uh, were, were going in front of the um, uh, Heritage Committee. And I told the, Her the Heritage Chair, Heidi Fry, at the end of this, come on, first off, let's talk about how much money this represents. This represents, for us, $25 million, 25 million bucks, which is about 10% of our ad revenues is digital revenues. It's a 4.5 billion bucks. Uh, in history, so we're, we don't make a difference. The difference is though, is we saw this coming a long time ago, our shift to digital is a commitment, and imagine Canadians being served by the public broadcaster without um, digital platforms to, s to find our, our content and to have conversations going. In 2016, it's impossible not to think about a media organization not on a in a digital environment. We just have to be the survivor. Absolutely, and we will continue to do this, and that's the drive that we have put in all of the strategic planning we've done. Speaking of surviving, we have a conservative federal candidate, one very loud, two altogether, saying uh, these are members of parliament. Canadians voted for them to represent them in Ottawa, and now they're calling for CBC to be dis disbanded. One has even started a website, Bye Bye CBC, online poll to get rid of the CBC altogether. How concerned are you about that? Well, I'm, um, I rarely do this, but I'm going to quote our minister in an answer to uh, uh, a member of one of those uh, parliamentarians questions last week in the House. And she said, you know, we did consultations across the country, 30,000 people. We've been uh, uh, going across doing town halls, talking about the media industry, and there's one thing we have found out, you know what, people love the CBC. And that was a direct quote from our minister answering a question in the House of Commons. So from there, I'll tell you, I've, I've heard these things. It gives you an, uh, an idea of how difficult perhaps the previous environment was for the senior teams at, or the senior team at CBC Radio Canada power. and the conversations that were difficult. That being said, I'm not going to be concerned about a person who doesn't understand the role that we play in Canada, that we play in the regions, that we play about culture, and the important role that the public broadcaster does in supporting and leading democracy. If we went commercial free, though, wouldn't we be completely dependent on government funding? Absolutely, we would. We could be at risk if, if that's the person we vote into government. You know, the CBC doesn't belong to Kelly Leach or, or other people who want to dismantle the CBC. The CBC belongs to Canadians. And if we become the ad-free public broadcaster that I see is maybe a possibility for us, and, the, and Canadians see the advantage for them of a public broadcaster, of that stature, of that scope, of that substance, I don't think any government, and that's why one of the suggestions that we are making in our paper that, we, that you're referring to, is we want to take the politics out of our funding. We don't want uh, yearly funding. We want five-year funding, and we're suggesting five years because the conditions of license that actually govern us are five years uh, in the making. They go for five years from the CRTC. So we want the funding to be matched with the conditions of license in the same way that the BBC has a 10-year license and the funding to match that. We're all fine with the accountability that would, that would come with that, but that's the vision that we have. Five years instead of year to year. Yeah, I mean, we're, as you know, I, I get a confirmation of our budget sometimes in March for a tax year that starts on April 1 for us. Or sometimes in June, I get confirmation for the budget that we have. Makes 
running a $1.5 or $1.6 billion company, somewhat of a challenge. Thank you, Belacroix. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Janet.